Hello everyone. Welcome to Worlds Apart, Words Together, where best friends share laughter, stories, and an unbreakable bond. Ooh. Hello. Hello and welcome to this week's episode where I get to talk about myself, which I don't Yay. like. Doing. <laughs> well, no, then I guess it's gonna be a very short episode this time this this week. Yeah, probably. Um, but no, to this week, this week we're diving into just a little bit. Last week we kind of gave like an overview of February being self growth. The theme of February has trended towards being like a self growth month, and so we kind of dove into some major five categories that Mart and I thought were pretty significant in self growth. And yeah, so now I guess this week I'm gonna talk about myself. Yay. And which of those five categories best I find, with... yeah, I guess some cat so the five categories that I feel like are probably my weakest ones or ones I just want to work more on. Okay. Sure, we'll go with that. Yeah, because last week at the end of our episode, like I asked you what was something that you want to work on this week. And you kind of said that you want to, you know, start implementing some sort of routine throughout your either morning or evening, um, just to get some stuff like on a routine basis, doesn't matter how busy you are, how tired you are, that you want to have those things. Um, so have you been trying to incorporate that a little bit? Yeah, I I think uh like I think it's this week's been a little interesting, but um definitely so Isn't last every week, week though. Yeah, my life is just... You know we should do <laughs> this is a side side thing. We should do like a dear diary and just like a series. One time. Okay. We'll, we'll think what, about that. What do you what do you mean by a dear diary series? <laughs> <laughs> like we just put together instead of everything you would like write down in the diary or something about that day okay. we just record instead okay kind of like our voice messages that. kind of like our voice messages back to back our voice messages though people they're they're long sometimes no a podcast like, is like 40 well, yeah. minutes they they are but just on a random Tuesday, it's a 12-minute voice message from Leah, and I'm like, oh no, what happened now? <laughs> yeah. But, so anyway, going back to, like, what I said last week, because I didn't really have the right words. Literally, I was like, I'm going to try to shower more, which was not exactly what I meant. Which you did. I did. I have, taken showers. <laughs> I have taken showers around, okay? Just... Don't come after me, okay? I, I took some showers, okay? I'm, but I'm so was, proud of you. It was more around the the idea to take care of myself and nourish, like, love. I guess the typical trend of, like, love yourself challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and more of set into routines of a good morning routine, which I kind of have-ish. Because I wake up so stupid early, but I really struggle with wind down evening routines because I'm either still trying to do homework, still trying to finish up work, trying to pack lunches, doing dishes. Like, I'm always doing something up to the point of like, okay, I actually have to go to bed now. There's no, okay, it's 8.30, I'm going to start my evening routine and whatever right and then at the yeah. end you go to sleep it don't work that way for me at all and i want to kind of gravitate towards something like that yeah because as mart knows this past what two weeks now i've had extreme nightmares to the point that i don't want to sleep which i've had before and it's not fun when you are expected to be on top of your shit and chronically going for I don't know 
15, 18 hours of the day, and you're running on two hours of sleep, maybe, just because you were so tired. Yeah. And a lot of that had to do with some other things going on at work, and we just won't go down that rabbit into my home life or apartment life um, and, like, my outside work life. And I think that is what carries, obviously, into, you know, sleep, poor sleep hygiene. So I really yeah. wanted to start focusing on building that routine and trying to really wind myself down, let go of the mess I had to deal with that day and kind of take care of myself. And then hopefully that leads to, you know, better sleep and sleep quality. Once I started doing that a little bit because I used to like go to bed and then just be on my phone up until I would go to sleep. But then it would be so hard for me to focus on like falling asleep. So now, since a while, I've been doing this bedtime routine where I read and just wind down before I go to sleep. And it has helped me tremendously. Like, I've been sleeping so much better. Yeah, and I, like, I definitely believe what you're, what you do right before you go to bed, it matters. I mean, whether it's just stress and high cortisol and adrenaline, or if it's, um, too much, um, like, LED light from your phone or from TV or whatever, um, Mm -hmm. too much, just too much stimulation, not being able to turn your brain off and just chronically going over things that you need to get done. Um, It could literally be anything. And I think if you can get into a good routine to help shut those out so you can truly go to sleep and get quality sleep, because ultimately it's really quality of sleep over quantity of sleep, because you can sleep 16 hours and your quality can be awful and it's not really going to do you any good but you can get six hours of the highest quality sleep and your body and your brain are going to function at pretty much optimal level so i think it just prepping myself to get more quality of sleep is one of those it's kind of like a gold that I've had. And what this. are you like incorporating to get to that point? Um This is a great question. <laughs> because we're halfway through the month and I still haven't been able to establish a true routine yet. Yeah. Um, like I said last week, you but like, last week was kind of like my like breaking of the straw. Like I, I, so many things happened last week that mentally and emotionally just broke me, and I've started to rebuild off of that and figure out what's next for me because what's what I'm currently doing clearly is not it, and no. so. Um, after refocusing from last week, this week's been a little better. Um, I've just given the, uh, I don't care attitude and I'm not going to care <laughs> attitude. Really, it's just making sure I have a, I'll, I'll show you since some people can see the video. <laughs> there is this, there is this app. I'm getting it called Habit Tracker. Okay. And that sounds promising. It's actually quite useful. I love it. Um, the app itself looks like the three bar one. You yeah, see that? I just, okay. No, I don't see that. I don't. You don't see it? The three, the three bar. Put it more to your right. Yeah, now I can see it. Hey, the one that has yeah. the three bars. Okay. Now that everyone can see what's on my phone. Um, anyway, 
So you can, you that, that app is really useful because you can put into things, you guys can see how far behind I am today. You can put in things you want done and how you kind of like outline your day and it can be daily and weekly. And so I have my wonderful list of everything I am to get yeah. done the, today. Wow. And then it's like a it's virtual a pretty cross extensive list. list. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> and then what you do after that is it's like your own personal digital mark off, and you can just swipe over, like swipe oh. over, and it says you did cool. it. It says you did it, and then it disappears, and your list gets smaller. And you can also look at it in like a whole week format for every thing, oh. if you want. And you can also look at it as a month overview. Or is oh, maybe that's cool. Year. Maybe it's a year. It might be a year overview. Oh my gosh, just shut the glare. So <laughs> I found this app this weekend. And so I started using it. And it's actually really nice because I'm someone who likes to make lists. And I like to mark it off. Okay. Um, but this one you can set as repeat. So you only really have to make one list. And it repeats every week. Mm. Um. We'll definitely I don't share it. this app with yeah. like I our don't listeners. have it. I don't have like my school stuff on there. Like I still handwrite that. I don't have enough to really put on there. Yeah. But that's for groceries and laundry and just like personal development. Uh, when the when I want to clean what? So like you know, one day I say okay, I'm really gonna do a good clean, deep clean of the kitchen. Then. I can mark mm -hmm. it off and then you can say that I'm going to deep clean the kitchen once a week and then once you swipe, swipe it, it's gone all week because you already did it. You don't think about it. <laughs> um, so it's kind That's of nice. nice. Um, so I'm not really a digital organization person. I'm, I'm getting there. Um, but I love the handwrite thing. So this is kind of a, a step, step more of the, the digital room for me. Um, but I, I, I do like it that I can hold myself accountable yeah. that way. Um, so that's helped me a lot this week. It it really, it, as I mentioned last week, tying it in a little bit of making a list of priorities and then making a list of stuff you want to get done. And that yeah. really helps me separate because everything in that list is stuff I want to get done on that day. Mm -hmm. And then anything else I accomplish is kind of... An a extra. Bonus. Yeah, it's kind of a bonus. And I know it looks like a lot, but that's just because there's still like some one week or once a week things still on there that, you know, that day hasn't come around yet. So it's still on there. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I have found them to be quite useful. I, I do enjoy it. Um, In terms of like <laughs> bedtime routine, I'm really trying to find one that works for me I shared with you a couple days ago I really want to start developing a nightly kind of like skincare routine and I obviously I don't have money because my school took all my money from me yesterday Yay. um so it's going to be you know very basic probably like three steps um and I kind of want to start that, you know, either this week or next week, uh, go to the store and um, get that and focus on, or not really focus, but start implementing that as part of my nighttime routine. Um, and then what products are you thinking of getting? Dude, if I know, I'm going to go find the cheapest thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe you made a list on of things that you want to get for that. No, yeah. it it's probably just gonna be like a basic, like, like a exfoliator, cleanser. yeah, exfoliator, uh, cleanser type, and then a moisturizer, and then yeah, probably whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I'll let you know next week. I'll give an update when I get it. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. I haven't good. figured it out yet. Like I said, I, it, it's it's a it's a work in progress. <laughs> 
That's okay. That's what we have this month for. But doesn't mean that、yeah. after this month, we're not going to be working on self growth anymore. But no, but this that's, is just our focus、yeah. for right now. Yeah, my focus. My focus, focus. is to be happy. Ah. <laughs> Do you have anything planned for Valentine's? No, I'm poor now. <laughs> Linda took all、planned. my money. Linda took all my monies. <laughs> so that'll be a cheap Valentine's Day for you. Yeah, and I don't think we're gonna do, really do anything because Hunter has to save all his money now to probably cover my half of rent and utilities because Linda <laughs> would took all my money. So yeah, wonderful. Maybe、oh, we'll watch、okay. Netflix. Yeah, cute little movie. No,、it's、I don't have any. He,、mm. Chances are he'll probably go to Target or something and get me chocolate. I don't know though. But no, in terms of Valentine's Day, no. I don't think we have anything planned. To be honest, I don't think we've ever celebrated Valentine's Day because it's always been during conference, and we were never、yeah. together anyway. So, you know, it's okay. It's kind、There、of like a day. It's kind of, yeah. It's kind of like it's not an anniversary. It's not a birth. Like it. It's not really significant. No. And we don't really have the money to do anything like fancy. Maybe, maybe we'll do one of those challenge cards. That'll be fun. We、we'll, it was kind of cool last time we did it. It was kind of weird, but it was cool. It was all right. Yeah, I you gotta send me those questions because you have been lacking on those questions. Oh, that's because we have been lacking on those questions. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, between、okay. the sicknesses that went around in January and mental torture that happened for the two weeks of February for me, <laughs>、uh, yeah, we're lacking in that that、That's、daily、okay. devotion <laughs> devotion questions. So yeah, we got to、yeah. get back on that.、Um, I just twenty twenty four was a really rough start. <laughs> I'm just gonna well, that only、it. that only means it can get it can go up from here. No, I'm sure it could go worse, but it's just been a really bad start. That's okay. <laughs> I have a question for you, though. You are frozen. Of course.、Oh. What is a question? My question to you is: Looking back, let's let's say looking back at when we first met. Oh, so that's a long time. That was. That was two thousand. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. Fall yeah. of nineteen. Fall of nineteen. So twenty nineteen. So that's five years. Mhm. About. Around. Mhm. Almost. What do you feel like has been the thing you've grown in the most? Ooh, that's a good one. What have、one. I grown in the most since we met? Yeah, for、oh. me, it's also difficult to say because I've been with you all this time. So it's like, well, if I were to see you then and now, I probably would be able to pick the difference. But now, because I've basically talked to you every day since then, it's like, yeah, I'm trying to think. Like I'm sure I have. Um. Okay. Actually, it's not that hard. Um. I think between then and now, the one thing I've grown most in is knowing my worth. Okay, I can see that because、yeah. there、mm -hmm. were some times back then I didn't give, <laughs> I didn't care. Let's just put it nicely. I genuinely just didn't care. And I let people use me. Don't say it. <laughs> and then, um, and even in workplace situations, not just friendship situations, I just wanted to be. Oh yes, I'll go do this for you. Or yes, I'll make that take that shift. Or yes, I'll work the extra hours. Or yes. And people looking back, people really just kind of took that for granted. And especially、mm -hmm. in the past year, I feel like 
I have grown in the area of knowing myself more. Now, there, there's, I want to clarify there's a difference between me growing in knowing my self-worth and growing in the uh, positive thinking and loving of yourself. Because <laughs> I still am very harsh critic of myself and mm-hmm. there's a lot of things I want to change about myself. So in that area, no, I, I that is still a really um, struggle on my side of stuff. But in regards to knowing my worth in relationships, friendships, whatever, um, and like in the workplace and what I can bring to the table and more believing that like I have good knowledge and I do have good characteristics and in that kind of area, I feel like I've grown. I would agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But no, like hard. I said, it is it is difficult, though, because I've been with you every step of the way. Yeah. So even though I, I've seen, like, that growth, it's like, well, to me, you're not really any different than you were five years yeah. ago. <laughs> you know? Oh, but... I am different than when I was five years ago because we went through some really bad. Yeah, no, you you definitely five, are different. I went through some really bad times five years ago, um, and I'll, I think a lot of that was catered to that. Yeah, mentality. But what I more mean by that is, I think, like I have not started to see you as a person in a different way. Like I still value you in the same way maybe even more than five years ago yeah i mean that makes it it is hard though to look at a before and after when you see the in between yeah (laughs) yeah i mean it is it is because you don't notice the small differences and you don't notice the small changes or whatever it may be when you're there for along the journey or you know you're there throughout the time and if you took a screenshot of one and a screenshot of the other at both in, like at you know both scenarios you would be able to tell probably much more of a difference yeah i like being being there every step of the way <laughs> yeah you should don't want a before and after no no with some people i i it's okay like i don't care about the in between but no, I, I I do agree with um with you growing in that way, and especially with what's going on, you know, right now with lab, which is no fun. I and did you putting yourself out there and just being like, no, I'm gonna leave because y'all fucking your assholes. Exactly. None of them, None of them listen to this, so it's fine. No, so like, so then you just setting yourself up for something better is something that I I don't think you would have necessarily done five years ago. Maybe eventually, but it would have taken you longer. Yeah, I have this tendency to stay with something till very last Ooh, minute where I can't long. take it anymore. And then I'm like, oh, man, I really should start. I should get out. This is not working. Yeah. I do Maybe have the- also because somewhere you have to hope that it'll change. It's like, hmm, you know, maybe if I stay just a little longer, it'll change into something better than this. But it never will. Yeah. The one thing I've learned over five years is... If you have told your opinion of something that should be fixed or reevaluated or come up with solutions and have laid out um, the problem and solution in a way that you think might be working and you've stated your opinion multiple times on 
whether it's the same thing or different things or whatever and if you've done it individually and or with a group you can only do that so many times and it's up to the people who are your supervisor your manager or whoever's in charge to make that change because otherwise it's never gonna happen you can try to change it and you can try to I don't want to say change because you can't change it without them but you can try to create a better situation and environment but from my experience then it just turns into a them versus they and that never ends well so if the people on board or the people above you are not on board and don't agree then you're better it's be off really just hard. saying your piece and piecing out, especially if it's something that you don't see yourself doing long term. Yeah. And that's kind of the situation I'm in. Like, I don't want to be at Linda with long term. Um, it's not my what I envision as my in career goal. And now no. watch me return. If I go back, you gotta stop me, man. Um, um you're not gonna go back. <laughs> no. Um, and then. I forgot what I was saying. I, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, once you've said if... Oh, I don't want to work... I'm, I don't want to go... I don't see Linda being my full in career. I don't want to do research my whole life. And I definitely don't want to do clinical research my whole life. So I feel like my lab position kind of is... It's been long enough. Yeah, it's been long enough and it's given me everything I pretty much need considering I don't really want to go into the field. So that being said, it's along with a lot of other toxic and... Hmm, toxic? Toxic, just just a little. um, Like, you know, water bottles being shoved. You know know what? I just don't care. (laughs) Hashtag it, Lindenwood sucks. I don't care. Whichever you want to do. Toxic masculinity... misogynistic bosses name it i've never been more looked down upon and disrespected as a woman in science than as my current boss and he hides it well i give him i give him gold star a plus 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 round of applause he hides it wait 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 wait. i have something yeah that's what he is he he does an amazing job of hiding it, but it's still there. Every woman who's worked there, at least in the past year and a half, has felt it. Um, Which is so insane to me. It's like it's it's you know you know what I call it. He takes steroids. It's steroid rage. He has that. It's a thing. He oh, it, he can't control it. I know he thinks he can. He cannot control it. I don't really believe there are certain things. And conversations that have been had and certain comments that have been said that I think would not be said if he wasn't on steroids. Um, I don't care if they're the small SARMs dosage or actual. I have no idea. Um, but any kind of steroid hormone going into your body is going to affect you um, in one way oh, yeah, or the other. Totally. Um, there's that and um he is very insecure both our boss both my bosses are extraordinarily insecure um one just can't take confrontation and refuses to correct anyone and the other one believes that he is an absolute god yes he has a god complex (laughs) obviously most people who take steroids have a god complex um i think those kind of go pretty similar hand in hand um we could get so much hate for this though if anyone ever listens to our podcast (laughs) um whistleblower at this point i don't give a shit that's okay i don't either we keeping it real here i my professors i I will say my professors has been great this is nothing about really the learning experience i do wish it was a little harder my master's degree but my my professors have an amazing knowledge background and I have learned a lot from them whether in the classroom or just one-on-one in separate projects I have learned a lot from them this is nothing to do as clarification with professors 
it is literally just the work environment and my GA position. Genuinely, the only connection to the schooling is that in order to have the GA position, you have to be enrolled in grad school. Yeah. My classwork, I, my tuition, nothing is affected by this job. I still pay fucking full tuition to work here, which is ludicrous considering other school GAs get their tuition waived. Yeah. Um, so I've literally gone bankrupt for the school to work into this environment. And I don't care. If someone is listening to this and they want and they're female and they want to go work in there, be my guest. He will talk to you for one day and then he'll act like you don't exist. I've seen it with I mean if you're if you're, you're up for that, it's fine. <laughs> you'll get water bottles shoved at you, you'll get yelled at. Um, not really yelled at, but spoken very um, raised voice at to the point that about things that were actually his mistake because he can't write very well. Um, yeah, th- there's a lot of pointing fingers, but like I said, it's been my last two weeks and that was the breaking point and it's been going on since at least last summer as, you know, very noticeable and yeah, I, I don't care. That that's that's a summary. Um, so hopefully getting out sooner than later and finding something yeah. that I feel like I can make a difference is, and that's part of my February self growth. There you I go. Can, <laughs> to tie it all back in, I am growing into realizing situations and work positions that really aren't meant for me, and I've out, literally outgrown the position. And I'm ready for something new. And that's kind of where I'm falling now. And um, it'll be an exciting new step, hopefully. Yeah, we just kind of hope for the best and move forward and um, see what happens. So fingers crossed that some of these uh, job applications come through with a yes, because I'm, I'm ready. So how many have you applied? Um, one is officially in and, well, until I know it gives me my transcript. And then I'm probably going to work on the second one today and tomorrow. Okay. Um, and then there's a third one I have in, like, the back pocket just in case. I don't really want that one as a... Yeah. That would be so my, third, see... my third choice. My third of three yeah. choices, if whatever. Um, if the other two said no. But we'll, we'll see. Um, it's exciting. Like it, I feel like it already gives you some relief knowing that you're going to be leaving at some yeah. point. Yeah. It, I really thought that I really thought that I didn't have experience or the capability, not only capabilities, but I didn't really feel like I had the experience to apply for other jobs in a amount or fashion that they would want. Yeah. And I think it just I kind of just put my foot down to myself and said you looking like tally up everything I've done like in the past five years let alone since I was 14 years old you can put something you can put a portfolio essentially together to make yeah you we'll see 100 percent. i don't know i like everyone tells me oh you've done so much and i'm like i really haven't done anything um it's just my perspective of my life because i feel like i've been yeah. in the same place in the same routine for years and i don't really feel like i've branched out or gotten that next step or that you know, experience that I should have by now, but I, you know, that will come. I mean, everybody has their own pace in, in that way. And I was talking to my mentor today and I was like, well, you know, I've been applying to different, um, positions and every position is telling me that I need X amount of years of experience. And she was telling me that, I, with my age, with where I am in my education, that I have nothing to worry about because it will all fall into place. And I was like, thank God. I hope it will. What, so what did, what did she, what advice did she give in regards to these, you know, entry level jobs needing three years of experience when you've been in school? 
Well, she said it's like while you're doing a master's, there's no way you're going to be getting that experience. And I was like, well, yeah, I, I've noticed. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I guess she didn't explicitly say anything, but I guess her advice is like just apply to whatever position comes across and hope for the best. So I it's guess. like a numbers game. The more you apply, your you know your chances increase for at least one to say yes. I guess so, but okay. I also don't want to be applying to a hundred different jobs because there's not a hundred different jobs that I would like enough to really do. You know. Yeah, but you can't be too picky out of the bat. Like no, right no, out. definitely no. Um, but yeah. I mean, I have two positions that I'm going to apply for. Nice. Um, in the next two weeks, so that yeah. is already something. And even if I don't get that position or don't are not getting hired, um, it's still experience. And we, um, we worked on my resume a lot, mm -hmm. so my resume now looks almost perfect. Um, oh, nice. And yeah, she was I like, haven't. Well, done anything with my resume no i don't know i mean She's i've updated me. it but i know the format should probably be a little different yeah i mean the way we did it was we created an academic uh, yeah resume so you have your you have your work you have your work you have your cv academic which is all your academic stuff and then you have PhD. like your resume which is yeah, because I know the way it was explained to me, which is, I don't know, everyone has their own opinion, but you have your CV, which is basically all your academic educational stuff, and then you have your resume, which is all your work stuff. Oh, uh, well, so what we worked on was an academic CV then, I guess? Yeah, which I mean, um, at this point, is pretty much all you have. You haven't it had is. all I, jobs. With a resume, I'd be putting in all my summer jobs. <laughs> I mean, that's essentially what I've done. I put in, you know, working retail, which I've kind of kind of omitted omitted recently. Um, but I did the brain balance and then obviously my GA position in lab and then um working at the chiropractic office. I mean, they're all part time jobs. And yeah. I've not had a full time job. No, no, but I think especially for like just coming out of school, like I don't, if I'm going to go to this research position and I'm going to be showing my two years of work in a restaurant, <laughs> eh, <laughs> they won't be hiring me. So I got to, I got to focus on like the research that I did and. Yeah, I mean, it definitely targets of what you want what or what you're applying for because yeah if you're applying for more of an academic position then you definitely have to have your cv up to up to standard yeah um mine's kind of all mushed in one because i don't really feel like i have much but i could definitely separate it i i'm getting to the point where i probably should separate it out but yeah you know we'll see yeah but I want to I wanna mention my, my second thing. I know we kind of went on some tangents, but tying <laughs> into the whole job and figuring out what the next steps are in terms of graduation and jobs or next, you know, further academics. The one thing I have really mm, found interest in, I'm really starting to take an interest okay. in, is um like finance like personal finance okay hear me out hear me out <laughs> um i don't want to find fun of everybody in finance i do i do because who wants to sit and look at spreadsheets all day i don't want to go to school for it I, i'm not going to sit through school like i think you can teach yourself finance like why are you paying 37k a year for finance when That's some can... poor financing right there. Yeah, legit. <laughs> um, go teach yourself and get a certificate. It does the same thing. Um, but learning the basics of personal, like personal and family budgeting, 
um, and a good financial mindset and how to save okay. and how you should save and when you should start what savings and what even are all the different types of saving account or retirement accounts that you can get into. Like it's it makes it stresses me out but I also enjoy it. I like learning like I don't believe I don't think you can be happy with a ton of money. Um like I don't think being rich would solve all my problems because you can be rich and kind of screw up all your money. But you also aren't taught any of that at school or no. ever. And you get to a point where you're on your own and you're like, oh, I'm 25. I should really start thinking about how to save money so I can live when I want to retire. Like that kind of stuff hits you out of nowhere. Yeah. Or at least it didn't mean. And so that's another, I guess, area of growth. I'm really in my quote unquote free time trying to learn more about and educate myself about because okay. I do don't I I don't want to get in a position where I'm in my 30s or 40s and just now starting to pay attention to that kind of stuff I want to start now and at least start the educational process of saying okay Budgeting, you know, that's something we should all probably know from a pretty young age. Like, how can I better budget for me, myself or myself and Hunter yeah. or whatever it is? So when we do have a family, it's not such a rude awakening. Um, and then just learning, okay, I'm going to have student loans to pay off. He's going to have student loans to pay off. Then we have what type of investments should we be doing and just start like a running portfolio of stuff I'm interested in, want to learn more in when I think I should be starting or we should be starting different things. Podcasting. Yeah. Yes. But I'm not that smart in that kind of stuff. Like I said, I don't have a degree. I'm self-taught. I'm still learning, but. I so do think to me, it is so funny though important. because. I think it is a really good step to take um, because if you budget well, your life is going to be so much easier than mm -hmm. when you budget poorly. Yeah. Now, the thing about retirement has always shocked me in the United States because here, the way it works, there are different like pension funds or whatever, mm -hmm. and different i'd say communities so you have the um let's say the entertainment yes, sector so if you work in entertainment you are in this big giant like pension funds from entertainment so whenever you work a part of your salary a percentage goes into that fund mm -hmm. and then later on when you are retiring, you will get that money. So like, you don't basically have to do anything yourself. It'll just automatically withdraw itself from your salary, your monthly income into this fund that will await you at some point. Yeah, we have something similar here, but there's so many other things that you can do to save extra money, so. Like, mm -hmm. Hunter has a full-time job now. He has a 401k, which is our retirement plan. So much money goes to your 401k every day. Yeah. Or every paycheck. But companies will... You can put so much money into your 401k. Companies will match that. So it essentially doubles. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, And then... You have different investment things, and I mean, I know I'm going to get all this wrong. Like I said, I'm not, I'm learning, okay? So don't come after me. Um, you have come after different, you. you have different investment, like banking things you can do, IRAs, Roth R IRAs, long-term yield savings, all these different things that you can put part of your paycheck away. Okay. And it could be like a dollar a month. It doesn't have to be like half your paycheck goes to it and you can dump it in like and invest it in. So then that's something else you can pull out of once you hit retirement. Yeah. 
Okay. So you would essentially have like two. You'll have your 401k and your IRA. And then, you know, you have essentially two funds per person. So like Hunter and I will have like four funds if I was to work full time and have that as well. It sounds very confusing. Not gonna it's, lie. Yeah. Um, and it is confusing, but on, like, it's also not from, like. <laughs> it is confusing, but it's also really not it's, confusing. It seems confusing <laughs> when you first start getting into it, because I know when I started, like, playing around in it, in, you know, the finance, like, personal finance field, I was just like, yeah, I'm never going to get this. Like, I just, was like, I don't even know why I try. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. And then I I kept doing piece by piece and bit by bit. And it kind of started to form kind of like little Venn diagram bubbles in my head. And I started to kind of put some of the pieces together. Obviously, okay. it's not, it's not going to be like, I can tell you exactly what this does and what you should do. No. Okay. I, I don't no. know yet. No, as long as you know, like, what steps you need to take for you to, like, be... Yeah, okay. and obviously there's things you're going to learn learn along the way, but I think I'm 25 and I'm taking the initiative to do yeah. this. There's people my age who probably have no clue what this is and they're just going to, you know, figure it out, what, in their 30s? You know, there's Whenever they get around people to it. who are 23 and don't have a bank account, so... Yeah, and then there's people who are 23 and have a full-time job and think they can spend it all. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's been interesting um, trying to get Hunter on board. He is um, not seeing the benefit of learning this... But he is a business guy. ...type of adulting. Yeah. <laughs> they don't teach you this in business. No. They learn, like, international communication, and they learn, like, basically like an MBA. They, they, they don't learn personal financing. They learn, if you want to build a business, these are the people, this is the type of things you should look out for. This is how you register it. This is a, That's what he learned, the completely useless crap. Well, my sister's boyfriend is a finance guy. Yeah. And... They got all their shit figured out. <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to get there. Um, like I said, I'm trying to get Hunter on board. I'm really trying. Um, He'll get there. Yeah, just not as fast as I'd like. Uh, well, I even made least... a fancy spreadsheet. I even showed you. I made our fancy spreadsheet. Uh, yeah. We've yet to use it. I told him, like, two days. I told him yesterday, and then this past weekend I'm like we really got to fill that out again like it's time you know it's yeah. the middle of the month we got to fill it out he's like oh yeah 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 we, we should okay yeah, <laughs> um so yeah there, there there's that and I think honestly it's just he doesn't see the importance of it right now um but if I wait for him to see the importance of it it's gonna be too late so it is I kind of bring him around, and he looks at my Excel sheet, and he was like, oh, that looks complicated. I'm like, it's not. Oh my God. Business people. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just learn, and I wish it's stuff like that you learned. Like, that's beneficial. I shouldn't, I know it's part of getting older and being an adult, and you gotta learn stuff on your own, but my goodness, it would be so nice to have just a <laughs> basic template of how to be financially stable. Dude, I've been literally talking to my parents about this a few weeks ago. I was like, I was just bewildered. I was like, why don't we learn these things in school? I don't, I don't necessarily need to know about geography. I could care less about what a volcano looks like. I want to know how to be, like you said, financially stable or how to fix a tire when my tire is broken. Some shit like that. But we don't learn that. We learn why cold air and hot air don't work well together. Which, all that shit, I don't even remember. 
Yeah, I, I just think that there should be... I mean, even if it's optional... <laughs> I mean, I mean seriously. yeah. I, there's, I don't... I, I bet there's probably YouTube videos that'll tell you exactly how to do that. Oh, I'm sure. And like I said, that's what I've done. Everything I've thought of, it's... You know, it's because I, I've come to a point in my life and I'm just thinking, like, no, I really should take this serious now. Like, I've always been good at budgeting. Not great, but, like, it's, you know, I've had to. I've paid for school, basically, out of pocket. I worked jobs to yeah. pay for my everything. I had to know how to budget to an extent. But now budgeting to, and involving different savings account and budgeting to involve yeah. setting aside for retirement or whatever starting it may a family. Be. Yeah, starting a family because shit, that stuff expensive. Even if I don't want it right this second, you know, you yeah. still have to plan for it because otherwise you're never gonna get there. But well, you can't. Yes and no. I mean, families aren't necessarily I planned, mean, but no, um, but. You gotta be somewhat financially stable to really start a family. Not always, you know. Sperm and egg can meet accidentally, and it does it occur. Can. It does. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's ideal. <laughs> no, the ideal situation is that you have some sort of financial stability before it. You know. Yeah. Yes. Because that. you want to be able to take care, good care of the child, and yeah, whatever yeah. shit. I, I'm I'm giving you a hard time. I know. I'm used to it. It's okay. But it's just it's just one of those things, I guess. Um, this year, I really... You know, housing. Okay, the housing market here is confusing. And knowing how much you need to save up to put a down payment on a house for a mortgage and like blah, blah. Interest rates. Okay, that stuff is confusing too. When is the right time? When's a good time to buy a house? When is a bad time? Mm -mm. Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. <laughs> Wednesday morning. I'm telling you. If you uh, close I, in a house on Wednesday it's morning, I promise stuff today. like that that I'm, you know, as part of like self growth, growth. This is probably like a whole year long process, but it's something I'm starting to try to really <laughs> grow in my knowledge Good. and hopefully set myself and hopefully hunt her up as well for. Being somewhat financially Life beyond. in the near future. Yeah. I mean, I think it's good. I think you and I are kind of both in that phase of life where we really need to start getting our shit together. It's going to happen. Yeah. Hey, you took like, your 20, get your shit together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's been long enough. <laughs> Come on. You've had two decades of fun. Get your shit together. <laughs> yeah. Like, no more fun. No more fun. It's it's fun it's it, it's the in between stage where I feel like it's really hard to have fun because Dude, I, you don't I, have the money to unless you just come from really rich parents and get it. But you don't really have the money, and you're trying to get yourself to a point where you're financially where stable. You have money. <laughs> yeah, and you have money to have fun. <laughs> like it's so. But then hard. you need that money for a house. You need that money for yeah, but you can other still, things. And that's when you want to be more financially smart and understand how to set things aside and do that so you can have that. But you order to do that, you kind of need a constant flow of income. Which you can't do. It's an endless cycle. Which you cannot do because all the places that are hiring need people that have X amount of years of experience, but I come out of school and I have no work. Yep. Yeah. Hey, being... I told my mom that I'll apply to be jobless. <laughs> and then my mom, she pulls out this joke. She's like, I bet there's people with more experience than you. And that are <laughs> I bet there is. <laughs> That's so true. Like, Thanks, mom. <laughs> That's so... <laughs> that... That's... Oh my god. That's so true, though. That's Joke amazing. too funny. That's amazing. Your mom really hit you hard there. She did. <laughs> this was my reaction. Uh, but yeah, I think I think in terms of you know places that are categories or whatever you want to call it that I feel like I've grown or trying to grow or 
learning. I think a part of growing is learning and, you know, whether that's finance and just trying to get yourself together or yeah. it's understanding your kind of like self worth self worth and being okay with who you are and what you can bring to the table. It's it's important. It's funny that you mentioned learning. Uh oh. I call out Michael today. Oh no. I I send you that message that he mm -hmm. has his seven page paper due today and he hasn't started it. He is learning the art of cramming. No, he's not really learning because this man texted me and I'm gonna quote for you. He texted me. Now he said that he had checked his articles and he could access them. And he said now it's just a matter of breaking the info down into the lit review. He he asks me, do I have to talk about each source? This man is a master student. He's done criminology and psychology. Those are like the two heaviest degrees with writing research papers. Five years down the, down the road. So I told him, you're asking me questions as if you've never done a lit review before. Has he? He's done multiple. Wow. Because we literally, I helped him last year um, when he had a 10-page paper due. And he was struggling, so I helped him. And he said, it's been a while. Then I said, you only use a source if there is relevant information for you to make your point. Then he asks me. So I'm still presenting my research question. Like, do I present my research question and hypothesis and talk about sources? I was like, it's a research paper. What are you expecting? Is to he do? doing? But is he doing a lit review, or is he doing a research paper? Well, he is doing like a research based on the literature. Yeah, I mean, he's doing a lit review. Yeah. What's his What's his research question now? So he's got to pose a question about a certain topic, and then by providing literature, he's got to try to answer or give a clarification on that topic. That's what he's okay. So he's doing me. a research. He's he's literally he's not doing a true lit review. Like he's literally just doing like a research paper. Right, but then based on what he's yeah, finding you... in the well, yeah, literature. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, how that's you do, like, a basic paper. research paper. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, this is stuff you gotta know. He was like, I do know. I'm just overthinking. And then I said, well, you gotta stop asking me because if you never, like, if you don't trust yourself and you don't make a mistake, you're never going to learn from it. So you'll always be dependent on someone giving you the right answer. Yeah, people don't always give you the right answer. No, what if I give all the wrong answers and then you're going to follow that lead and then you're going to get a zero on your test or paper? Yeah, it's, uh, you gotta, I don't know. you gotta learn to fail. You gotta, I mean, you, yeah. Just, just full blank. You gotta learn. Is you're always learning every, maybe not every day. Well, every day something probably comes up that you're like, oh, I didn't remember that, or oh, that's new. I didn't know that. But you gotta kind of push yourself, whether it's ac in academic realm or not, to challenge yourself because otherwise yeah, totally. your brain turns to mush, literally. So, guys, <laughs> find something to challenge your brain. Whether it's a puzzle or... Crosswords. Crosswords. School. School. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. Also, I ordered that journal. Okay. And it was supposed to arrive yesterday. Then I got an email and it was supposed to arrive today. Okay. And now I got an email saying it's supposed to arrive tomorrow. Can you track it? I can yeah. And every time it was like, oh, we apologize. We changed the delivery date. I was like, thanks. And, and the funniest thing is it's literally being shipped from a town or city, whatever you want to call it, 30 minutes away from here. Lol. 
I could have gone and picked it up. <laughs> That's not good. No. So, but once it's in, I'll make a cute little video about it. Yeah, I hope it works out for what you're thinking it will be like. So is there anything else that from the five topics that we talked about regarding self-growth where you're like, well, this is something I want to focus on or something that I think is important um, for your you personally? Um, There's always things I want to do. Things I want to improve. It's just how my brain works. Yeah. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, I'm low-key perfectionist, undiagnosed, but that's just <laughs> compared to other people. It's just how I am. Yeah. Um, there's lots of things such as, uh, you know, being more consistent with sleep quality, which we kind of got into stress reduction which we also got into of me quitting my job hopefully um but like there's other things you can dive down into those topics um yeah. i know like nutrition like you know how you should eat healthy like i know that for myself i just don't always do it so you know i hate myself for that but then you know the whole realm of boss body positivity and I don't really like that phrase, but being happy with who I am because I'm still struggling of finding the, I don't know how to say this, but I, I'm still not okay with who I am. Does that make sense? Of how I look. Um, especially like post-swimming, um, my body mm -hmm. went through a lot of changes. I went through a lot of changes and like, I'm still trying to figure out where that equilibrium is of like I'm happy with what I look like and what I see um but also like what's a healthy version for myself and my body and my stature and you know my skeleton um and I am not there yet that's yeah. one thing I struggle a lot with because yeah I go work out every day like I can lift pretty dang heavy don't test me um, like, I can, like, I'm still active, and it doesn't, like, my body doesn't show that. And it's really, yeah. it's been hard. It's been hard to accept. It's been hard to find a routine of which I can be happy with who I am and get to a point where, like, I'm happy with what I see. And I also know that my body's healthy for what it yeah. needs to do as a woman. Um, and that's just been... It's been a big challenge that's still, you know, oh, almost exactly a year later. Which I feel like is one of those things that is always going to be a process. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I think, I'm hoping that, like, the more you work through it, the more you, or the more I, um, you know, work through what's going to make me happy, where, you know, where should I be, where do I think I should be. And just meet in a place where everything is kind of satisfied. Like, I'll be fine. Like, I don't have unrealistic expectations of what I should look like. Like, I take it from a very scientific perspective. Like, women just don't have six packs. If they do, they're unhealthy, you know, kind of yeah. thing. Like, I, I know I'm, and I'm not built that way. I'm very well aware of how I'm built. And, so I don't have unrealistic expectations of, you know, the ideal figure. But where I am now is not how I saw myself after retirement. And that's yeah. been a big gray area on terms of just being okay with who I am. Those are some good words at the end of this this podcast that's what like. i'm known for those good words <laughs> yeah no i mean i feel like throughout life there's just always gonna be this self-growth we're never gonna be fully satisfied with where we are like we want to always continue to grow and continue to get better um but i also think it's it's good like we're adjusting to 
whatever like has to happen like we're not going to be the same person in five years we're going to be in a different spot in five years and we need to have gone through that growth to be able to keep up with whatever life's requesting from us at that point Mm -hmm. exactly so we're never going to be in the same position twice most likely so no no so i think uh, self-growth is very important and just being aware of what works for you and what you want to do and you know what works for you doesn't work for me and vice versa yep everyone is unique and you got to cater to that exactly so we'll leave it at that yeah so thank you for every thank you everyone for joining us as we offer a glimpse into the world of true friendship where even though worlds may seem apart the connection remains strong Thank you guys, and if you enjoyed this episode, which we hope you do, please leave some reviews or some comments and let us know what you want to hear, and we can work with that. So, until next time. Bye. Bye.